Hello everyone, my name is Eric and welcome back to Alpha Polaris. We are trying to figure out what to do here. Well, I kind of know a little bit now. We have the EPGE flag. We're going to use it and cut it down a little bit. And I'm missing one thing. Because now I have a stick. And there's some packing tape I missed over here too. I needed to check this out because I was just walking around, walking around like I have no idea what I'm doing. So what I gotta do is uh, combine this with this and then use the packing tape. Tape them together! Yay! There's a pole syringe. My zoology professor would be proud of me. So let's go and help the girl. A little bit. Our polar bear friend. Make sure that she is feeling okay. There, and now we ha we can poke the bear with a stick. That's a smart thing to do, isn't it? Poke the bear. Eh. It's for your own good. You'll get the next shot tomorrow. There we go. I'm a veterinarian suddenly. Somehow. But now, we're actually going to have a look at the bones. Them bones, them bones. Oh my. Oh no, wrong way. Laboratory. There's some <coughs> laboratory equipment here, like the fume hood. We can put the things in here. Not possible. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have the fume hood, we have Rune for some reason, we have photos, energy drinks. Al drinks those, like he really needs more calories. <laughs> so I probably need to do this somewhere, but the only place I can think of is here. Now, perhaps I can put them in. bit hard to get them in here. What? It's already open. Yeah? Ah, fume hood container. Aha. Fume hood. Where, where was the com container in fume hood? Wait. Um, container in fume hood. Yes. Can I put it on the table? Yeah. There we go. Maybe I can put them on now. Container with bones. Can we put it back? It's a bit too early for that. There are bones in there. Well, I guess maybe? I cannot that start with that. No, no, right. Sieve. Some water. And then some acid. I guess that's it. This should be possible now to clean them off and remove some of the minerals, I guess. A mild solution of acetic acid should dissolve the calcite. Yes. I'll check the results in the morning. <laughs> And I think that's it. I think we're done for today. That's the end of day one. So all I have to do now is go back to bed because I've done everything I need to do. We can click on him again. Yeah. Maybe I should rest a little. Yeah. There we go. Because I've talked to everyone in here. There's nothing else I can do. Let's go to bed. Oh, nice socks there, hanging to dry. Ooh, cutscene. Let's see now. Oh, look at that Aurora Borealis. I love them. It's really pretty to sit around and just watch them. How the, the lights move around the sky. 
that's not good, I guess. Oh, shit. What a dream. What's that noise? Sounds like a garbled radio. Ooh, we better go and check that out. Let's go and have a look. Garbled radio. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Because I guess air, all hell is breaking loose now. Yes, there's something going on. The tiki bar is open. What? Hi there, whoever you are. You scared the hell out of me. I see oh. the moon, the beast. Um. Uh. Don't come any closer. What the hell is happening here? Are you on something? It's close. It sees us. Okay, Tony. I hear you. Okay. Everything is all right. No, no, I can't. It just starts over. There, there. See? Listen to me. You are on Alpha Polaris, and there's nothing here. Take it easy. What? Are you sure? There's nothing here, Tully. Nothing here. Fuck. Ah. Uh. What did you see in your dream? I don't know. I was back in Longwoods, Maine, and then in the glacier, the polar bears. They were. And the sky, Maine. it was wrong <laughs> somehow. What were the beasts you saw? At first, I thought there were polar bears. But okay. then, I don't know what the fuck it was. A spirit. Under the ice. Okay, easy now. Tell me, what's right. wrong with the radio? How should I know? It's the... Some electromagnetic shit or something. <laughs> go to bed. Look, maybe you should go back to sleep. No, no, I need to focus. You go ahead, Norway. I'll sit down here for a while. Are you? I'm good. Now leave me alone. <laughs> I'll do a quick check around the station. All right. It's blaring out something. To the kitchen! Is there anything odd in here? Oh no, everything looks fine. Looks okay. Nothing weird here. Uh, let's let's just go and check with the elders. Let's check with uh, our other friends, with Nova and Al. Is she crying? Better not disturb her. How about Al then? Al. Al. You in there? Al. Nope. Either he's a deep sleeper or he's not here. The polar bear, though, was kind of freaky. Look at that. The storms. Uh, it's a storm out there. Yeah. It's not in there. No, he's not. Hmm. It's getting weird. The rifles are still there. Everything's alright in here. Just being creepy. How about over here? In the lab. Ah, there's Al. Al? Look at that. A hell of a light show. Like the sky itself was burning. Such profound beauty. I took a reading with the magnetometer. And I think we're very close to a record-breaking geomagnetic event right now. There's something strange taking place here. Yeah, radio's gone haywire. The radio is blaring out some weird noise. Yes, that makes sense. And it wouldn't even be the first time. Way okay. back in 1859, a couple of great geomagnetic storms took place. They were caused by immense coronal mass ejections in the sun. Back then, telegraph stations were spreading all over rural America. Electricity was soon to be introduced to households, and telegraph lines operated with it. As it happened, something freaky took place during a peak in the solar storm. Stations in Portland and Boston maintained conversation for several hours. 
with no battery power. They were using some form of geomagnetic energy? Correct. Geomagnetically induced current is the term. The field lines fall here, Lou. Now, I don't know the specifics, but I think the ion storm is causing the effect you described. Who knows? Sounds plausible. We might see even more peculiar things happen. Like monsters? How can an ionospheric phenomenon have effects this severe? Well, I'll bet you see Aurora in Norway all the time, Rune. Do you know much about them? The basics. They're caused by solar wind getting trapped by Earth's magnetic field. That's the science. However, the Cree call them the dance of the spirits. Looking at them here, in the middle of this desolation, they waver constantly, like a veil or a mask. A mask shifting to reveal a glimpse of some long lost truth. Perhaps a visual message, which we as mankind are no longer able to connect to. Mysticism. I kind of agree with that. I remember watching them as a child and having similar sentiments. Like they were put up there as a show. There are legends in Norway. I think the Sami people believe that Northern Lights can descend from the heavens to hurt men. I'm glad you understand, Rune. Getting older, I've come to realize there's a more spiritual side to the Arctic. Yeah, I can see that. I ran into but... Tully in the living room and had a conversation with him while he was having some sort of nightmare. A waking dream? That's interesting, especially considering his fixations. He's constantly going over the dreams he's had, the dreams he will have, and so on. But I wouldn't worry. Ted's obviously very responsive to these things, and he's been under some stress lately. The isolation yes. and the darkness can get to you. Not like this. It took me several tries to get him to wake up, and what he told me about the dreams... Yes, but still, between you and me, waking dreams occur mostly in juveniles. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Ted doesn't always operate on the level of maturity one would expect. <laughs> True. There's more. I've also had a nightmare. In my dream, I remember the terror of someone watching me from a distant ice shelf. Tully had a feeling of something haunting him in the woods. You think there's a connection? I don't know what to think. Without trying to be dismissive, you both have spent long days out on the glacier. Anyhow, there may still be a powerful subconscious message for you to grasp. A spiritual one as some people in touch with themselves would say. You could be right. But maybe you should hit the sack before I switch on my full ramble mode. Maybe. One more thing. I don't think you'll be able to reach anyone with the radio tomorrow. We've blanked out during ion storms half this magnitude before. Then I'll treat the bear myself. That's the spirit. We should also power down the tower so nothing gets fried. But don't worry, I'll take care of it. All right, sounds good. That's right, I need some sleep. Okay, back we go. We'll go back to bed. Have some more nightmares, I guess. Find out everybody is slaughtered in the morning. I don't know. Something bad is about to happen, though. I feel in my water. Day two. Hey, Knudsen, you gotta see this! It's Knudsen. Kamardar, don't you go all sweet on me. I found something real fucking eerie. Oh, you asshole. The Swede here needs a little more sleep. You need to see this. Fun. Before we'll stop. Hold <laughs> yeah. oh, on a second, you psycho. There's something psycho for you here. And about last night, we need to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You crazy something or another. Man. There's something wrong with that guy, though. Seriously. I better go out there. And I'm going to do like this. I'm going to save now. Okay, second morning is already there, so I don't need to save. Let's get out. 
Let's see what the heck is he wants. Let's see why his pandas is in a twist. I guess. Wait a second. There was something odd with the bear cage. Did the bear escape? Oh my. Ah. Uh... She's gone. That's a piece of her flesh. So she wanted out and ripped the cage open? I don't see any other way this could have happened. Putting her in the cage was a dumb idea. You've been doing your science project on climate change or whatever. Is this it? No. No. Polar bears are unpredictable animals, especially when hurt and captured. You really don't see the pattern here? We are basically animals, right? Maybe the storm messes up everything with a brain. Well, you know, electromagnetism can do all kinds of shit, so... Like you last night. Yeah, just like that. Man, I was far off. I guess it's plausible. The human brain functions on electric signals. I've been checking the magnetometer, and the worst is yet to come. The storm is gaining momentum. I probably need to put the bear down. Can I take the snowmobile? Sure, the keys are in the ignition. I need to chill somewhere for a while. Well, I need to find out where she is first, I guess. I mean, look at all this blood. <clears throat> Disappears. That's really weird, too. What are you doing here in the middle of Greenland? My Didn't I ask this? this all right. What are you working? I don't know yet. I need to clear my head. All right, all right. So I guess I need to get a weapon and find out where she went. I probably just need to sit down at my computer and triangulate where she is. That's my guess, though. I should click myself and see what what. I'll have to track the bear down. Interesting to see if there's anything left in the fume hood. All oh, right, right. Forgot about the fume hood. <clears throat> I'll check that first because, you know, priorities are a little bit odd. Morning. Uh, Morning. Made any progress huh. with the thesis? Not really. Well, if it helps, our little side project here, the one involving oil, is showing some real promise. Good. Well, I guess. The bear we caught yesterday escaped by tearing open the cage and apparently hurt herself badly. I'm not surprised. Those are intense animals. What are you going to yeah. do with her? I'll probably have to put her down. If the tracking collar is still on, I'll find her. Uh, let's Did see. Did you have now. any nightmares last night? Yes, I had this recurring one when Euler Jr. catches us not doing our jobs. Other than that, <laughs> just some nighttime flatulence, but that's definitely out of excitement. All these dreams have really gotten to him. Look, Rune. Ted is not really operating on the left between yeah, yeah, you and me. <laughs> the oil fire. I understand you've found a large enough reservoir here to start drilling. Beats me. Determining the field size will take some seismic work. But we know uh -huh. there's some prime stuff down there. Saturation, volume, color, sweet taste, and whatnot. Substantial bonuses Wait, was it chocolate our sauce or oil we, we found? Focus on the mission at hand. Do you think I can use the radio now? It's still powered down, and I think we should keep it that way. The tempest is raging up there, even now, in the daytime. That could seriously cripple our equipment. I don't think we will be able to contact anybody. Unless you want to listen to some dork playing ukulele on Radio Waikiki. One time, a few years back, I remember being unable to hear even the carrier wave from Thule, while still listening to the Moscow Philharmonic. Strange are the ways of upper atmospheric transmissions. Yeah, what are you what doing? Are you working on? Telerix, if that means anything to you. No. Nope. We need to hustle with this thing. Bob's kid is not known for his tactfulness. Mm-hmm. Alright. Well, let's have a look in the fume hood, though. 
I see you're making progress with those. Let me know if you find anything. Sure. Let's see what we got. Let's see, let's see. Hide and bones. Calcination, yeah. There's some calcination left. Overall morphology is clearly male. Judging by the size, the individual was an adult. Anything else I can do? Uh, anything at all? Because there's nothing here. Let's see. How's femur? Ah, there's the... Uh, okay, that was the thing I missed. It seems that the bone was butchered in a crude manner. The marrow has been extracted. Mm-hmm. Was it eaten? That carries some grave implications. There's one person who might know something about these. To laboratory. Al? No. Right, right, Nova. See now, is Nova around? I should probably take this thing. The... <laughs> is it an like, automatic shotgun? Still like the shotgun. But, whoa. I don't think it will do much to a uh, polar bear. Let's see now. Nova. Nova. Are you there? Are you in there? No, nope. then she's probably somewhere else. Where are you at, Nova? Out here. Are you in the kitchen making a sandwich? Are you eating Al's sandwich? Nova, shame on you. Did you eat Al's sandwiches? She looks tired. Everything all right? Yes, just had a lousy night. You're not the only one. The radio woke me up. At least you got some sleep. I've been running those samples for, what, like four hours now? If there's something I can do to help, like pick off the hairier bug legs. Thanks, but those bugs are still microscopic. How's the bear doing? She's gone. Mm -hmm. She must have smashed the cage during the night. She's apparently hurt pretty badly and has an infected jaw. She'll probably die if I don't find her. But you can find her, right? Yes, if the tracking collar is still attached. Yep. Let's go with go through everything here. So, hang on tight, everyone. You don't look like you slept too well. Rough night? No, it's more like personal stuff. I haven't had any strange dreams. Not really. Tully had night terrors last night. He seems pretty shaken. I know. First morning in months, he didn't tell any of his sexist jokes. That is a good one. Al thought you might have some insight on those bones and the hide he found. If you mean as an Inuit, not that much. People often have this misconception of our cultural unity. But in reality, there are many different cultures and groups. I'm a Canadian Inupiat. In Greenland, there's the Kala'alit, although the dialect spoken here in the north is Inuktu. It's very close to the Canadian Inuktitu that my mom spoke to me. However, I took some courses on Paleo-Eskimo cultures, so I might be able to tell you something. Alright, that's good. From my first day here, I noticed how you take pride in your past. I'm sure your mom taught you that. Not really. She always told me to forget the bygone ages and become a trucker. <laughs> Looks now, but let's go with talent. Losing you to the logging industry would have been a waste of talent. You should see me driving a Kenworth double trailer up the Wrangell Mountains before you say that. Definitely <laughs> not for the faint-hearted. Anyway, I learned to take pride in what I am after I moved to Alaska and went to university. Mm-hmm. That's nice to hear. Good on you, Nova. You didn't seem very happy to hear Euler Jr. was coming. We just don't need anyone from management meddling in things right now. Especially those who are full of themselves. <laughs> Uh, we, are I'm... Tonight? we are, but I have to zone out for a while first. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a major oil prospect down there. 
Yes, but Al thinks we need to do a little more work Such before off. trumpeting about our find. Then let's have a look at those bones. I found interesting details in the bones Al brought. There are knife marks all over them, and the bone marrow has been exposed in one. That's usually done to feast on the juicy innards. Which would mean the Paleo Eskimos were practicing cannibalism. No, I don't think so. Why not? It's known to happen in extreme conditions. Trust True. me, this is something that I know really well. Cannibalism is a strong cultural taboo for the Inuit. They would not do that. There's some evidence of even older cultures than the Inuit in Greenland. Degenerate hunting cults, very warlike and tightly organized, which doesn't apply to us. Sounds like they could have practiced violent rituals. But as I said, they were not Inuits. According to the myth, they were driven into the sea by old Inuit tribes. I have a couple of articles on the subject. I'll fetch you one. Okay, thank you. That, that's good. I also have another article about the mythological side. I'll try and find it for you tonight. Well, that's very kind of you. <clears throat> Let's have a look then. Articles. Oh my. If you don't want to hear me read this, then you can end the episode here because I'm going to read it and then I'm going to finish all of this. So, before reading this, I'm going to say thank you everyone for watching and if you liked what you saw, do leave a like and a comment. But for now, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys later. Chapter 7 Anthropophagy As mentioned in the chapter concerning the Cree and the Sioux, cannibalism is culturally an unaccepted behavior within the Esquino. Some tribes consider it a manifestation of mental illness, some a sign of possession by an evil spirit, some of both. It means transgressing mystic laws and required banishing or killing the perpetrator or perpetrators. Here we will look into the Tonijuk myth underlining the cannibalism taboo. The Greenland Eskimo uh, believe in a race of cannibalistic men called the Tonijuk, inhabiting the web island northeast from the mainland in, an ancient, in the ancient times. They were said to have hunt, to hunt down the unwary and to slay them gruesomely. In some verse, versions, the Tonijuk were a race of giants that were driven to in, inaccessible mountains in the inland. In others, they were said to be a tribe of primitive wild men, very wild, vile and cruel, who turned the, to the evil spirits in their hunger and went mad with the ravenous desire for more. Ashton, the spirit, spirit of solitude, hunger and gangrene, heard their call, descended upon the tribe and possessed them. Uh, Ashton could not be satisfied. The more human limbs, hands and feet they were offered, they offered it, the more it ate, until the whole tribe was consumed. Then Ashton went back to a remote waste far north, carrying some men with it. While most scholars regard Tunijuk as a myth enforcing the taboo, there are some that believe there existed a tribe of prehistoric men in the Web Islands. This is supported by the find by Charles Wilde in 1962. Wilde was a U.S. Army geologist and amateur anthropologist stationed in Thule, who discovered a man-made mound in the island during a fact-finding mission. They were later found to be the remains of an ancient pylon. Ah, okay.